Those of you who have followed me for a long time may remember a couple years ago I did a video on the C-Box. It was the under $200 consoleized Neo Geo MVS unit straight out of China. And man, mistakes were made. That thing blew up my OSSC, caused a big headache. And you know, it was what it was. Now, I've decided to try this thing out once again. So they do have some new versions out. And according to the company, the RGB sync voltage issue that was in the original ones has been fixed. So we should no longer have that issue. Over the years, they've made a few revisions. They've fixed some things. They've made an all around better unit from appearance anyway. So mine came with the 60 watt 12 volt power supply. And also I did get that 161 in one multi cartridge, which we have taken a look at before on the channel. This one's a little different. I've never seen this revision before. We may dig into that a little bit more in another video, but we will be testing this thing out today. So with this MVS unit here, the C box, I really like this green color, the way it looks. It's slick, man. It does have USB ports, so you can use certain USB controllers. I am gonna be using this Retrobit Sega Saturn 2.4 gigahertz controller, and it works beautifully on here. You also have the original, you know, Neo Geo AES style ports, so you can use those kind of controllers on here as well. The unfortunate thing, this USB Neo Geo X arcade stick does not work through the USB port. So I wanna open this up, show you guys the internals before we test this thing out. But back to that Neo Geo X arcade stick, there is a conversion kit sold out of China that does give it those Neo Geo AES style ports. So you can use it on this unit. I have a couple of them ordered and when I get them in, I will be making a video testing that stuff out. So, you know, look forward to that. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description from whom I bought them from. But here you go. This is an MVS 1C single slot arcade board. So everything here is looking pretty nice. We have a Unibios that they've installed. And from what I understand, it is legit. They got the license to do so. It's a certain version. This one came with 3.3, whereas the one I had a couple years ago had 3.2. We will be upgrading this to Unibios 4.0 in the very near future. Hopefully I'll do a video on that. But here you go, inside of the box, everything's looking nice. The one thing I did have a question on is where you see it says Neo, MVH, MV1C, it says new channel underneath. I've had several, you know, MVS1C units over the years, and they all said made in Japan, where it says new channel on this one. But I did look into it, and this is a legit board, just certain revisions had that on there. So yeah, it's a legit board, no worries there. But this does have the stereo mod already done in it. We have component out, we have RGB, we have S video, composite, up front, we have all the controller ports. I think this thing looks really slick. Uh, you know, it's very similar to the previous style. Like I said, they do make a super gun version as well. And let's go ahead. I'm gonna put this thing back together real quick, test it out, talk about it a little bit more. So I did wanna test this out real quick on a cheap little CRT that I have. And I'm using composite and it looks amazing. Yeah, you're seeing that line kind of flow through the screen. That's just due to the recording. I don't know how you're supposed to record CRTs, but it looked good. It sounded great just using composite. Now I did test this on other more modern displays that I have using component and S video. And I was getting some distortions like wavy lines going through the screen. And I think that may be attributed to the output sync frequencies that the MVS uses not being standard. So it may be hit and miss there, but on a CRT, it looks great, but that's not the way I want to play it. I do want to play it on a more modern display, like something like one of these portable gaming monitors that I'm displaying here, or just my normal HD TV. So I have tested this with an OSSC with the RetroTINK 2X Pro using HD RetroVision component cables, and it looks legit. I'm having no issues, no distortions, using this on any TV. I have several TVs I've tried it on and it looks great. I'm not having any problems. But yeah, I mean, that's an additional cost if, unless you already have an OSSC or a RetroTINK. But it does work great with those devices through these more modern displays. So I can't really complain with that. Now, everything looking and sounding good for the most part. There are some issues with that 161 in one cartridge where 
you know, the sound could be a little messed up. Uh, there could be some glitches. And I'm not sure with this cartridge if it's a newer revision that I've never seen before because I looked at the board and it was a little different than previous ones I've seen online and ones I've owned before. But I am having a lot of the same, you know, glitches and issues that this cart's known to have. But for the most part, most of the games play fine without any issues. But I just wanted to point that out. If there is any sound issues with games on this cartridge, it's due to the cartridge, not the actual MVS unit here. So with this thing, it does have that Unibios 3.3 built in. We can access a lot of different things, turn on blood and metal slug, turn on cheats, all that good stuff. I will be installing a 4.0 Unibios in the future and testing that out. Hopefully that goes well. But yeah, overall, I've been very happy with this unit. I do feel the quality has improved over the first version that I had and the look of it as well. I mean, the logos that they have on here, everything looks a lot more slick than it did when they first put these things out. I could tell they put a little bit more work and effort into these devices, making them a little bit more quality. And I've not had any issues with this unit, having tested it quite a bit. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. When they first put these out, they were under $200 and the price started gradually going up. Now this, this configuration here with the USB controller ports and the standard SNK controller ports sells for around $228 plus shipping. And I feel like that's not a bad price. I mean, there's other consoleized MVSs out there that go for quite a bit more, double, triple the price. And you, you do get what you pay for in most circumstances, maybe not all, but in this kind of market, if you're looking for an MVS unit to play original cartridges or stuff like this, 161, you know, in one multi-cart or a Neo SD MVS cartridge at home, it's an option. It's a decent option in my opinion. When I first did my video a couple years ago, it was a little disappointing. The unit worked, but I just had those issues that have since been rectified by the company even though they didn't take care of anything back then. People were having issues with the controller ports not working, the RGB sync, all that kind of thing. And I did decide, you know what, let me give them another shot here and purchase one. They didn't give me this thing. They actually banned me from purchasing from them because they didn't like, you know, the things I had to say previously. Hey, it is what it is. I spent my money on this thing. I'm pretty darn happy with it. But at the same time, I do understand there's options out there. I already know people are going to be like, I'll just play on Mr. More power to you. I'll play it on the Raspberry Pi. More power to you. I don't care. Some people want to play in certain ways, and I just like to cover different options. In the same market space of playing on an MVS unit that is consoleized, yes, you can make your own unit for a heck of a lot cheaper. You can buy an MVS 1C board for, you know, $50 or less, just depending on where you look. And you do have that additional cost to get all the connections, controller ports, you know, video output. But you will be under the price of one of these units for sure. So it can be done. But the nice thing with this is that it's an all-in-one unit. Everything's been done for you. Some people don't want to have to deal with that kind of thing. And that's why I wanted to cover this specific product once again with this revision. Like I said, I've been pretty happy with it. Not really uh, disappointed with anything that's going on here. You know, the things that I seen was kind of to be expected, having a little bit of the distortions on some of my modern displays, but using like an OSSC or a RetroTINK rectifies that. It is an additional cost, but it's things that I already had and already used. So it wasn't something I had to buy to get the most out of this device, but just want to be upfront, you know, to get the best possible video output. You may need to look into a device like that if you're interested in this, you know, C-Box. So there you go. I will be doing some modifications to this thing, maybe tearing apart that cart, looking at it, finding out more information. Uh, definitely look forward to more content with this device in the very near future. But hey, really do appreciate you guys watching. Like I said, it's all about options, man. It's all about the options. And you guys know me. I use them all, man. Emulation, FPGA, original hardware. I just enjoy gaming. That's what it's about. So, hey, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.